y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I share all about my knitting, crocheting, all of the crafty things here. You'll see random other things pop in here and there. Today I've got so so much to share with y'all. I've got a lot of finished objects kind of catching up on some of the things I finished since the last regular episode. We've got works in progress, mail again trying to catch up a little bit and giveaway winners to announce from the last episode so let's go ahead and jump right in you can find me on instagram and ravelry as the crazy sock lady we do also have a ravelry group for this podcast i will have links for all of these places right down below this video in the description box and there will also be links for any shops that I talk about, project pages to Ravelry, everything that I will show you does have a project page on Ravelry. If I forget to mention anything or if you have more questions or want more details, the link to the pattern, all of that can be found over on those project pages. Today is Wednesday, November 9th. It is almost noon. I can't believe it's already almost noon. Had a bit of a busy morning. Wyatt had a physical this morning, so it was like the normal morning craziness of kids, you know, getting them everywhere they need to be, but then he had a doctor's appointment. He's going to be doing wrestling, so he needed to have a sports physical for that. So all the running this morning. Finally back home, sat down, jotted down some show notes, and here we are. We're ready to just talk about all the things. Definitely settle in with something to work on, something to drink, maybe a snack, because I have a feeling this might be a little bit longer of an episode <laughs> than normal. So I did post a video last week. I posted two actually, a Yarnable unboxing video for November's Yarnable. And then I also posted a whip parade, a work in progress parade. So I will, um, pop those up at the top here. I think you can only do that on a mobile device, but I'll also have those linked if you want to head over and check those out. Get caught up on all of the works in progress. There is knitting, crocheting, plastic canvas, cross stitch. That'll kind of give you a look at everything overall that I have as a work in progress. Some haven't been touched in a while, but I just went through everything. I thought that would be the perfect thing to do. So definitely head over there if you want a peek at like Scrappy Sunday projects. All of those things are there. I'm hoping to start doing the Scrappy Sunday videos again. That's something you guys have requested so much since I've talked about coming back to YouTube. So those will be starting up again soon. Maybe not till the new year. We do have Vlogmas coming up, which I am so excited about. That'll be here on YouTube. You can keep an eye out for that. But today it's going to be a normal podcast episode. I'm so excited to get back into the swing of things and be here catching up with y'all. I have stuff on both sides of me. <laughs> there is so much stuff to share with y'all. So I think let's just go ahead and jump in. We'll do giveaway winners mail and stuff later on in the episode. Um, let's talk finished objects because that's kind of what's on the top here. I'm going to set that back there. I don't need that just yet. So I kind of just have been keeping a little bit of a pile here for a little while. And I'm not sure if you guys have seen any of these as finished objects already. If you have, you're going to see them a second time. But I don't, I don't know that you have. So I have quite a bit, quite a bit to show you. <laughs> Mostly socks. I'm sure you're surprised. So we will run through those quick. These are in no order. They're, I don't remember when they were finished. Um, if you want all of those details, they usually are on the Ravelry project page. Sometimes with start dates, I don't remember to put them in, but typically you can find all of that over there. So let's see, let's go through these first. These were Holly Press fibers. These are the ones I feel like you guys may have seen as finished objects before. These were Holly Press fibers sock sets. And this one is Oakum Mount. I knit this for my husband, Eric. I may actually set these aside as a Christmas gift because there's no way he remembers that I knit these for him. I know he saw me working on them. I'm sure I told them they were for him. He will not remember. So all of these socks are my vanilla socks patterns. Some were knit magic loops, some nine inch circulars, 
various methods, but they're all vanilla socks um, by me and US 1 2.25 millimeter or US 0 2 millimeter. 64 stitches for all of them. They all have heel flap and gusset. I think that's it for that. <laughs> so these ones I did do the pop of collar at the cuff. I do have details for how I did that in my Ravelry project pages. It's like that on quite a few of them. If they are sock sets especially. But that's this one. I think that's the only pair for Eric. I think the rest of these were for me. <laughs> This is another Holly Press Fibers. This one was Dead Marshes. Again, pop of color at the cuff, contrast heel and toe. I love this colorway. So pretty. This one, the yarn is by Heidi and Lana. This is her candy corn colorway. It was a sock set that she had available perfect for October. And these two I also knit in October. So I had the Polka Dot Creek Halloween Advent. It was a self-striping advent. There were 13 days, 12 days, something like that. And I did two pairs of socks out of it. So I, yes, this is the first pair that I did. Again, pop of collar at the cuff. And I also did a pop of color on the heel turn. I do have a tutorial for this on YouTube. Tutorial for this is coming. <laughs> but yeah, these were super fun. This is self-striping yarn. There was about, I think, four stripes per mini on these. And then pair number two. The advent ended maybe like it was around in here somewhere and then I just used scraps for the rest of the sock. So I love these. These were super fun. I would definitely get this Halloween advent again. I've never done any kind of a Halloween countdown or Halloween advent and it was a lot of fun. I love the self-striping um skeins of Christmas yarn that are like the advent where you do a stripe a day. These were great. They put me in mind of that and it was just perfect. The last three pair of socks that I have here are all scrappy stripey socks. So this is a pattern and right now I just have it wrote up as a recipe. There is a tutorial pattern hopefully coming in the new year. Um, not hopefully, there will be. It's just Got to get it done for y'all because it's been so requested. You guys love these scrappy stripey and I totally understand why because I am obsessed. <laughs> I started doing socks like this a year ago last month. So I've been doing them like this for quite a while and I started with Whitney of Moon Glow Yarn Co's. It was a sock set that I had. It was like Crazy Cauldron. I think, I know she had it this year as well. But anyways, I don't have those here to show, but that's when I first did them. And it's just been such a fun way to use up scraps or use up a like mini skein set and a skein of yarn or like the sock sets that Whitney of Moon Glow does where you have mini skeins and a skein of yarn like in a set. It's such a fun way. So we actually have a knit along going on for this right now. There is um, information on my Instagram profile. So if you go to the Crazy Sock Lady Instagram profile, and it, that'll be linked below, there the highlights are the circles right above the grid. I know a lot of people don't know where those are, but those are the circle of, circles above the grid. And there is one there for the current knit along that's going on for Scrappy Stripey Socks. So you can find that information there, or you can find it over in the Ravelry group as well. Um, it ends the end of November trying to think if there's really anything else. It's just basically knit a pair of scrappy stripey socks and I do have the recipe for how I do these. Details on how to weigh your yarn etc. All of that right now is just over in the Ravelry project page that I'll link below. But I don't, I think I did these ones first actually. 
maybe I can't remember it doesn't really matter but this is one pair of them so scrappy stripey socks are stripes on the legs and then the same striped sequence on the foot So this yarn is Cozy Cauldron Fiber Co. The main skein is, I think it was Frankenstein's Bubblegum, and then it was Frankenstein's Bubblegum Mini Skein Set. And then I did also do a stripe of the main color in the stripe sequence. So this was one pair that I did for the knit along. Then another pair that I did, this is Three by the Sea Designs. Ooh, it was Candy something was the colorway names. I, candy Cauldron? Maybe. Um, but there's the full skein and then the mini skein set. And then I also had, I think this was Trick or Treat, it's by Mama Jess Knits, was a full skein of yarn and then a mini skein set. These were so much fun to knit up. All of these were. I loved using Halloween yarn for all three of those in October. And it's just, I love knitting those scrappy stripy socks. So much fun. My last finished object, oh no, there was one more pair of socks. So I will put a picture up here. I finished my pumpkin patch socks. This was the pumpkin patch colorway by Cozy Cauldron Fiber Co. And the pattern that I did is Second Breakfast by Lindsay of Sock Witchery. I'm just putting a picture up because I gave them away and I do not have them to show anymore. I literally finished them when we were at lunch. Eric and I were having lunch with our friend Janet. I finished them and I think, yeah, they were done. I think I was weaving in the ends and one of the managers at the restaurant that we frequently go to for lunch commented on how much she liked them and she asked if I sold them and I just enjoy giving hand knit gifts to people who are that enthusiastic about something like that it brings me so much joy so i literally wove in the last end folded them up and handed them to her um she was so excited and i was so excited to give them to her because literally it just brings me joy and i knew that she really liked them because she just kept going on and on about how much she liked the color and they were so cute and so i hope that they are bringing her some joy so that's why I don't have those to show that was the last sock thing I believe my only other finished object is a hat so this is my muscle burra hat this is a pattern by Yazolda Teague I have knit I cannot even tell you how many of these and I love the pattern so much so it is let me try it on first then I'll like take it all apart and show you um what it looks like before you fold it up like this. The yarn I used is by Fiber Seed. Their Sprout Sock. There is their tag. This is the Night Zone colorway. And I did have some leftovers, just a very little bit, um, but I did not use the full skein of this. So it's probably gonna mess my hair up oh my goodness I love it this is actually the first time that I've tried it on so you guys are seeing the first try on I love this so much this is seriously my favorite hat pattern ever it works so well for everybody there are different sizes in it it's just perfect everyone that I've made fits so nice I do the double brim I don't like it super slouchy um, you can unfold that and have it be a little slouchier if you want, but the double brim is perfect for cold winter days here in Ohio because it's already double thick. So you fold that up and you've essentially got like, it feels like a million layers of fabric on your ears so that your ears don't get cold. But I love this so much. Okay, so 
it is folded in on itself. You start at one end, increase, work all the way down, decrease, close it up, and then tuck one side into the other and you have your hat. It is so nice. And it's so like, that's just so much knitting right there. It's the perfect mindless project. I finished this and I'm like, who needs a hat? Who could I make a hat for? Who will want a muscle hat? Maybe I just need to start one and have it on my needles and it'll be like the pumpkin patch socks that they will just find, it will find who it needs to go to like those socks did. It's actually not a bad idea. I think that's what I might do. Maybe somebody will comment they like the color and I'll be like, here you go, you can have a hat. Hats for you, socks for you. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, anyways, so that's all my finished objects. Now we should probably talk works in progress. I do, let's start with a new design. Yes, you heard that correctly. So it has been, the last design that I put out was a sock pattern for Sock Camp 2021. So it has been like one and a half years since I've designed anything at all. And I was kind of, I knew I wanted to like dip my toe back into designing, but I'm not going to kid, kid, I was like terrified. I was thinking, what if I can never think of anything again? Because I couldn't. That entire one and a half years since I've done that other sock, the shop just like took over all the brain space and I could not think of designing. I could not think of tutorials like I couldn't. And I'm, I'm realizing that it was that brain space. Like I needed that free brain space to feel creative, to feel inspired. And apparently it's back because the floodgates just opened up the other day and I now have like a full list of things that I want to do. <laughs> and I'm so excited about them. I'm in no rush with any of them. Um, not going to overwhelm myself in any way, shape or form because I have learned my lesson, but I'm very, very excited. Um, about all the things and to share all the things and just to feel that creativity come back and know that it's still there, that it is not gone for good, makes me very happy. So this design came about because Whitney of Moonglow Yarn Co. posted her Candy Cane Lane sock set. And it, it was like, I, I was watching the reel. I think I must have watched it three times because it was a good reel and the colors were gorgeous. And I was like, oh, I want to knit that sock set. And it was like, oh, I want to do a scrappy stripy sock. Of course, because that's where my brain goes if there's many skeins and a full skein. And then it was just like, bam, the idea for this sock came from that. And it's a play on scrappy stripy. And it is color work, fingering weight sock pattern. And I cannot wait to share it with y'all. I'm not gonna share it today because I'm waiting until I knit it up in Whitney's sock set. That should be here Saturday. So probably, depending on how much knitting time I get this weekend, Monday or Tuesday, easily probably, because I started, I knitted up with scraps first. Um, I have one sock done and I finished that sock in like just over 24 hours. It was like 25, and a half hours, I think, <laughs> to knit one sock. It was all I could work on. I couldn't put it down. I was so excited. I was sending Whitney pictures. I was sending a couple of knitting friends pictures. Like I was just, I was sending Eric pictures even. I was driving my husband nuts while he was at work. Um, <laughs> I was just thrilled. But I thought I would show you um, the scraps that I used. So I have it in a bag from Daisy Girl and Company. This is one of her peekaboo bags. And I believe this is a large size. So for the main color for the one, again, this is with scraps. I just used this gray. I have no clue what most of these are. And then I kind of went for like a vintage nutcracker kind of vibe. Eric loves nutcrackers. He has quite the collection of them. So I just kind of picked some colors that I thought fit that. I do know that this is 
a homespun house. I cannot remember the color name, but that is homespun house. It's a Christmas color. So I used a main skein and then five mini skeins. That is what comes with Whitney's sock set. And I'm trying to decide still, I think when I do the final sample up. So if you've seen my scrappy stripey, let's do this one. I like to do seven stripes on the leg. I like a, a longer leg. In the pattern, you will, I'll have instructions in there for doing any length leg you want and then how to figure out your measurement for when to start the stripes on the foot. But the sample, I only did five stripes and it's just not a long enough leg for me. I like a longer leg. So I think I'm gonna repeat some of the colors. I've got some, some thinking to do on how I'm going to do it, but yeah. So that will be shared next week because I know people are anxious to see it. Whitney's, I'm not sure exactly when this video that I'm recording right now is gonna go up, but I know Whitney's sock set is gonna go live in her shop. I will link it down below. Um, this Friday, November 11th, yes, at, I think it's 10 a.m. Mountain. I'll put it on the screen. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. So if this video goes up before then, you can head over and check it out or head over and check it out and see if she still has any available. I do believe they are ready to ship. Don't quote me on that, but I believe they're ready to ship. Okay, so that's work in progress number one. Number two, I have this in a Christmas. This has been in a Christmas bag for so long. Um, this is a bag by Mountain State Stitches. But I have dishcloths in here. Oh, and I'm remembering now, I forgot a finished object. Let me grab it. Okay. These are dishcloths in that bag. I keep them in a Christmas bag because typically they are gift knits for me but I did finish a set of dishcloths and I don't think I've shown them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six in a set. Six will be gifted in a set. And the, these ones were out of grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern by PJ Allen. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. And then my seventh one here, so when I knit dishcloths, I buy two cakes of the Knit Picks Dishy. I'll show these. I really need to silence my phone. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. Knit Picks Dishy. It's their 100% cotton yarn. So I buy two of every color. That gets me, and I'll go over needle sizes that I use and all of that, but that gets me six and a half, essentially, dishcloths. So then I have some Knit Picks Dishy just in a gray. I can't remember if that's the color name or not, but it's just a gray. I think I bought a big cone of it. Yes, because I have it caked up. Um, I caked it up on the ball winder. But I have a big cone of it, and I use that for the half of the seventh. So... That's my half that I got out of the leftovers of the dishy. And then I used that. And then I keep these. So I keep every seventh dishcloth that is scrappy looking. And that works. I have a gift set. I keep one. I haven't done these or gifted them. It was a year, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. So my sister has requested new ones and I'm like, if Cassie's requesting new ones, I'm sure everybody needs new ones. And you really can't go wrong. Everybody that I've gifted them to absolutely loves them. So that's one finished set. I can't remember, this was the Dishy Multi, but I can't remember the color name, I apologize. I don't have the tag anymore either. But that set is done and I am working on my next set out of the kitchenette color. And I am doing a new dishcloth pattern. I will put it on the screen right here because I can't remember. 
what the name of it is. A viewer Connie sent it to me. She thought I would like it. It is, it has become my favorite. The way you start and finish it is different. The way you do your corners, because you start, I don't remember which end was the start on this one, but you start and then you're increasing out. Then you decrease back down to this point. So the other one, I just find it never really looks quite even. The corners just never really look that great. At the end of the day, it's a dishcloth. It doesn't really matter. It's folded up in a drawer and then it's cleaning your dishes. So it doesn't really matter. But I find this one more enjoyable and the corners. Like it just looks a little better. It lays a little flatter. I don't know. I enjoy this one. So I have one, two, three, four done. And I'm working on the fifth. So I have this one, another one, and then the one that I will keep. I'm in the middle of a row. I've been working on this in the car while I'm waiting on kids at all the, the sports activities and school pickup and all that stuff. This has been my car knitting. So here's where I'm at on this. I'm on the decreases. I'm using, I believe this is a 16 inch chow goo. I think it's a US 8. Yes, a US 8 a five millimeter needle is what I like to use for these. So I feel like I'm moving along, but we are you know, into November here. I've got to get a move on. I don't know how many more. So I ordered a good bit of the dishy when I did the last round the Christmas before last. I can't remember how much more I have left. It's in the cabinet that's over here. Speaking of, I will be doing, I've had lots of people ask since I moved all my stuff back from the office and like we got the basement finished from the flood and everything's rearranged in my new space here for a tour and I will be doing that on a vlog maybe next week I'm going to try to do vlogs like every other week or something if not you will for sure see it in vlogmas which will be here before we know it <laughs> but yeah my lights right here I would move that and try to see what other colors I have but um I know I have a cone of Christmas that's not dishy though but maybe I'll get that out for the next episode because hopefully I'll have that set done and be ready to start the next set so maybe I'll get the dishy yarn out and show that next time okay a sock whip in a bag from stolen minutes and this is some yarn from a homespun house I have one sock done this is my last remaining <laughs> Halloween sock this is her ghost stories sock set So pretty. I have the second sock going. I am doing vanilla socks on DPNs. My um, pattern and then tutorial here on YouTube. So it started. I just need to work on it some more. If you watch the whip video, I have so many plans for things I would like to have off my needles before Advent knitting starts. <sighs> we'll see if that happens. But yeah, this one's on to the second sock. So this needs to be some like out to lunch knitting or something so that I can get those done. These needles are Signature Needle Arts DPNs. US 1, 2.25 millimeter. This one I can only show you the yarn. I am doing a test knit for Lindsay of Sock Witchery. For a new pattern that she is coming out with. I have it in a bag from Woodsy and Wild. I bought this at Indian Tangled, um, New York Sheep and Wool Weekend years ago now. But I'm using the yarn from the November Yarnable subscription box. So if you haven't gotten that yet, you don't want to be spoiled by the yarn. I feel like everyone should have it by now, but maybe not. So just look away for a few minutes if you don't want to be spoiled by that. But here's the yarn that I'm using. 
and I am knitting these for my husband Eric. So I think maybe by next time I'll be able to share those. I am into the foot on the first sock and it's such a fun, mindless, enjoyable knit. So I can't wait to share it with you. All right, I have two sweaters. This one's in my sweet little Dexter bag. That's what I call this one from Mountain State Stitches. This is my DRK everyday sweater. I think I posted the other day that I wanted to have this, the body of this done, a sleeve started by the end of the day, and then I got inspired to design a new sock. <laughs> so this yarn, let me show you that first. This yarn is Wool of the Andes Sport Weight in the Claret Heather color. And I have this last round to do on the body. That's it. Finish this round and bind off the body. And then it's sleeve time. So here's the sweater. Stand up and show you. Has a lot of ribbing on the bottom, which I love. And I am so excited to wear this. I think it's going to be so, so nice and cozy. So I have made the pattern, the sweater longer, the body of it. It is more of a cropped look. This is, I think I already said the name of the pattern, DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I did make this section longer. The ribbing is still the amount called for, but I just lengthened the body. So hopefully next time, next episode, the body will be done and a sleeve will at least be started. I feel like even with doing a new pattern this month, I could get a lot of my goals accomplished. Maybe at least half of them. I feel like I could. This next um, project is another sweater in a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. Look how cute that fabric is. This is my Lace and Fade Boxy, which I have made some progress on since the whip video as well. Let's see, there we go. Get it all situated here. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Look how pretty that is. So I am into my one, two, three, fourth color. This is going to be so pretty. I can't wait to have this done. Every time I've shown this, I'm like, you need to finish this. Why isn't it done? I only have one more lace mohair section, right? I think. Hmm. Can't remember now, but I'm pretty sure I do. And then the last color. Yeah, that should be right. And then the sleeves, which are not even full length. So this should finish up pretty quickly. There are a lot of stitches because it is a boxy sweater, so it's a bit oversized. But yeah, I love it. So see, I feel like my goals are totally attainable. I feel like they are. The yarn for this is by Whitney of Moonglow Yarn Co. She did have sets available in her shop for this sweater. I am not sure that she still does, um, but this is going to be the last color. So it goes from lightest to darkest. And then the lace sections are mohair. It is so, so pretty. This has been a super easy sweater. The top construction, not difficult at all. That was the, I wouldn't even say hardest part, but the part you have to really think on. The lace mohair, I do have to focus and pay attention, but that is mostly because I am so paranoid of making a mistake in mohair and having to try to fix it or rip it back or something. Okay, the only other work in progress that I have to show you, it has had no progress since the whip video, but I did want to tell y'all that I found my Santa pattern. <laughs> 
my Santa tissue box cover. It is from Mary Maxim. I had some people ask about that. Um, and I found the pattern. It was tucked away in some notebooks. So I'm determined to get this done. If, I don't know that it'll be done by December 1st, but at least like a little bit into December so that I can enjoy how cute he will be sitting in the living room. Maybe we'll see. So if you didn't watch the whip video, I did finish one of the socks that I wanted to get done. Aside from that, I wanted to have the ghost story socks done, the Santa tissue box cover, and both of my sweaters by the end of November. I feel like maybe we'll see. Stay tuned. Okay. I think that is it for all the works in progress and things. Last episode, regular episode, we did do a giveaway for 10 prize packages. And I'm going to put up a screen right here with all 10 winners names. So if you were one of the winners that are here right now on the screen, please contact me at crazy sock lady podcast at gmail.com. And I will need all of your shipping information so that I can get these prizes sent out to you ASAP. All right, now the stack of mail. <laughs> like I said, I feel like I'm kind of playing catch up a bit because it's been a while since I did a regular episode. So we're just gonna kind of go through all the things here. I do have, well, let's save that for last because the other one's on the bottom. Okay. So Bags by Awesome Granny sent me over a Thanksgiving bag and a Christmas bag. I am so excited about these. So they're both like a little gnome fabric, which I think is absolutely adorable. Here's the Thanksgiving one. Nice big size. I'm pretty sure this is the same size. No, is this bigger? Eh, no, I think it's the same size as this one. So perfect sweater size bag nice handle cute gnomes love the inside of that just the white and then the christmas one i just want to live in this christmas village it's so pretty this one has the same white on the inside I will have all of these shops that I talk about linked below that, so that you can find them easily. This package I've had for so long, I feel so bad. We're gonna have a couple of giveaways this episode, so make sure you stay tuned, because um, I've had these for a little while. So this one was kind of funny. So Arcane Fiberworks sent over a package. It was a total surprise package. They sent over two skeins of their Hocus Pocus yarn. And it was so funny because they didn't realize when they sent them that I, I ordered one. <laughs> I love Hocus Pocus. And when I saw this, I had to order one. So I have two skeins of this that we're going to be using um, for a giveaway. I'll let you guys know the giveaways, how many, what to comment down below and all of that. Um when we get done with mail. But yeah, this is Arcane Fiberworks Hocus Pocus colorway. I apologize that it is past Halloween, but you can totally use it any time of the year or save it for next year. It is such a gorgeous colorway. I did not get mine knit up, so I'm saving mine for next year. Then I have a package that came. I'm going to double check here. This is purling the props set hand dyed for assigned pulling. When using the main color, just purl whenever the stitches on your needle have the pop of color. And I will probably mispronounce that is W O L H O B B Y. Wool hoppy tag is coming off here. Let me show you this one. This is um, 
Santa's socks. And then we have, what's this one called? A black pumpkin. These were so much fun. I've never done, I've heard a lot about the assigned pulling yarns recently. I think there's like a sweater that uses it, but I've never used it myself, anything like that. So I think that will be so much fun to try out. I had a package come from Barley and Pearls. You guys have seen I have a Jeep bag from them, like a sock size bag, and they actually sent me over a larger Jeep size bag, which is so much fun. Now I can use it for some larger projects as well. Such a cute bag. It has pockets on the inside that are rubber ducks, which is a Jeep thing. Little rubber duck. So cute. And then they sent two of these countdown fabric bags. These are so cute. They did these bags thinking about like advent knitting, which I mean, that's just perfect. Look how cute it is. It's like an advent bag. So they sent, they told me what size they were. Let me double check. Um, mm -hmm. Medium and large. So this is the large one. And then this is the medium one. So they said, keep one, give one away with the countdown bags. And I think I'll let the winner decide. I'll let whoever wins this one. This will be another giveaway. And you can decide if you want the medium or the large. So I'm making a little <laughs> pile right here of the giveaway stuff so that I don't forget which goes where. I ordered from a homespun house, uh, gosh, it was a little while back, but she had Habitation Throw mini skein sets. So this is just a bag of minis inspired by a blanket that she knit, um, the Habitation Throw. So there's so many minis in here. <laughs> like there is a ton and it makes me so happy. I have the granny square blanket going that is only a homespun house yarns. I'm using scraps or mini skeins, leftovers from the advent I got of hers last year. So this is gonna go great in that. And I can't wait because now I already have some minis in this bottom <laughs> cubby over here, but I know I probably do not have enough to finish up my granny square blanket. So now I am set. I feel like I didn't show last month's Yarnable. So this was the October Yarnable colorway. Yarnable is a yarn subscription service. And this was the Raven. I don't think I showed this anyways. If I did, I'm sorry, but it was in the pile of things to be shown. So I feel like I didn't, but I thought this one was so much fun. So all the other stuff from that box has already been dispersed, but I had the yarn sitting there. So I thought I would show that. And then I do have my row one mini skeins from this month. I'll show you the bag first. They always come in a little bag like that. And row one is a mini skein subscription service. They have a different yarn dyer each month. Pull out. They always have a little packet here that has an info sheet, a progress keeper, some candy. Mm. That looks delicious. I might save that to have with my coffee in the morning. And the progress keeper is, ooh, a plate with a slice of pie. That's cute. Let's 
the yarn dyer for this month is Coats and Co. I actually saw they had a booth at Wool Gathering this year. Um, so it always tells you a little bit about the yarn dyer, the yarn base that you're getting, the colorways that you're getting. So that's always nice to have. And then, oh, these are very, very pretty. They are all tonals. Oh, that one's so pretty. And I love that with these, they have, each mini has the yarn dyer and the colorway name listed. So I think that's so, so great. I actually have another granny square blanket going with my row one yarns. So I will add that to that bag. Just a couple more things. I did order more signature needles. So I have a pair of straights that I'm using for, um, I started using them for my cozy memories and then I'm also using them on my jelly roll. It's blanking on the name. So I, I knew I wanted to get another set of them. They're kind of stuck in the back here. <laughs> there we go. I knew I wanted to get another set so that I wasn't switching needles back and forth between two different scrappy Sunday projects. So I ordered another pair of straights. These are the smallest size straights they have, which I believe is seven inch. I've got the swirly top stiletto points, and these are a 2.5 millimeter, which is what I'm using for both of those projects. So now I can stick these in my cozy memories bag and not have to switch back and forth, which would be a total pain. Then I also ordered some more DPNs, just my normal size, US 1 2.25 millimeter. They always come in a tube. I wanted just another pair of those. I've really been enjoying that Ghost Stories sock on DPNs. It's been a while since I've, I've used DPNs. I always have people ask if I have a favorite way and I don't, I just do whatever I feel like doing when I cast on or whatever. Needles are like readily available for me to grab. Um, it just hasn't been DPNs lately, I guess. Okay, so it's almost December, almost Vlogmas, almost yarn advent time, and I've had two advents arrive so far. I ordered the Polka Dot Creek. It was a Grinch, it says right here on the side was a Grinch Canadian Christmas countdown calendar. So if you do not know this about me, the Grinch is one of my absolute hands down favorite books, movies. I love it. Um, especially kids. Like it's something I watch every year. I love watching the old Grinch. I love watching the new Grinch. I horribly, horribly miss reading my kids that book. I miss reading them all the Dr. Seuss books. The Lorax. Love the Lorax. I love the movie The Lorax too, but anyways, I just love The Grinch. So I have that in here. Um, if you've not opened your box, I'm not showing any of the yarn, but I am going to show the boxes because they're super cute. But they all are in, the yarns are in um, little boxes with a number on the top. So I have those in here, not set up cute or anything yet, but <laughs> they're all in here ready to go. If you're new to the channel, new to yarn advents, they are essentially just like a, an advent throughout December leading up to Christmas where you open up it can vary. It can be one a week. It can be a 12 day advent. This one is 25 mini skeins. So a mini skein a day. It did come with a pattern. Um, I'm undecided on exactly what I'm doing with most of my advents, but, but I'll share more about the advents and what I'm knitting and all the things once we get going into Vlogmas. Um, that's some of the fun of Vlogmas. If you've never watched it before, you can see some of my previous ones. If you want to go back and watch those leading up to the new new year of vlogmas starting is opening up those advents every day 
it's just it's just fun it's just enjoyable so that is the first one to arrive and then I also had Whitney of Moonglow Yarn Co's arrive this is a DK weight advent the polka dot creek is a fingering weight Whitney's is a DK weight if you watch vlogmas of last year I had her fingering weight advent this is essentially the same thing DK weight I think she said a couple the colors have been changed out but it is a rainbow advent um so here is her card about it I decided what I'm doing for this one um, I was looking for patterns and Whitney actually suggested the one that I'm going to do. But I have two skeins of her Cottonwood Breeze DK Weight 7525 to use with it. And then all of the Advents are down inside of this bag. This bag came with the Advent. It's such a nice sturdy zippered bag. It's perfect. So the pattern I'm going to do with that one is bounce by 10 can knits making sure i'm not giving anything away on here it's black and white so but it is shown there like a crib size there's two different sizes um it says stroller and then throw size so i'm going to be doing the throw size and then i'm going to give it to my niece lily it's a rainbow advent so it'll be a nice fun rainbow and i think lily will love it so that one is all set to go. <laughs> I also, I had already had this pattern, but I printed out the Cozy Comfort Throw by Molly of a Homespun House. And I think I'm gonna do this one as well with one of my advents, not sure what yet. I might do this with the Grinch one. I think that would be fun. You hold two strands of fingering together, like one, main collar throughout so I'm just going to use like a bare yarn and then your mini skein as you switch each day. She designed this with one of her advents I believe um or to be used with her advents but yeah so that one maybe will be the Grinch one. I haven't decided. You guys that might be it. That was so much stuff. I think we're almost at an hour. Whew that was a lot. Okay, so our giveaways for this episode. We are going to have, let's do four giveaways this episode. So we have, let's see. Um, we'll do one of these, the assigned pooling sock sets. So the winner will get to pick one of these. Yeah, that'll be four. Okay, so one of these, we have two skeins of the Hocus Pocus from Arcane Fiberworks. And then one of the countdown holiday bags from Barley and Pearls. The winner will get to choose which size of bag they want and then which one of the assigned poolings they want, Halloween or so four, four winners. We'll draw those next episode. I'm like, oh, too much info. I'm going to get something wrong. Okay. Four winners. We'll draw them next episode. Um, keyword. Hmm. Let's do the keyword as countdown. I'll put that right here on the screen. What that means as keyword is it just makes it easy for me to I can put it in a, a generator online and it will go through the comments and pick winners from comments that have that word in it. So if you want to be entered to win any prizes um, from today's episode, you have to have that word. It, you could comment about something completely different and then just at the bottom of your comment, put countdown. Um, it just makes it so that I don't draw a winner that wasn't even entering for any prizes. Make sure you're watching the next episode for when I draw those. I'll try to do that next week. Um, so make sure you, you watch and so we can get this out quick, whatever size the winner <laughs> ends up picking, but make sure you comment and you watch the next one so you can see if you won that bag and have it in time to use starting December 1st. If you have any advent knitting or any Christmas knitting that you're doing, but I think it would be super fun for an advent project. 
All right, uh, that's all the knitting for today. So life stuff. Huh, I have just been settling back into just, I feel like it's kind of been a, a new beginning, but I'm just really getting back to life how it was before I started Crazy Sock Lady Co. And things just got a little crazy. <laughs> um, so it's been really nice. I've just been settling back into the house, a lot of organizing, cleaning, rearranging of things and finding my flow again uh, just around being around the house you know 24 7 again and it's been so nice I feel so much lighter and I, I can't even really describe how I feel but it has been such a nice and much needed change and I've been just enjoying every single minute of it. Like I said earlier, uh, Wyatt had a physical this morning for wrestling. So that starts next week for him. He's already been doing three workouts a week um, at the high school with some of the kids from the middle school. And then I think the high school wrestlers work out at that time as well. Um, Austin's been doing a lot of basketball stuff, working out and stuff with the team at the high school. So that's been great. And I just feel like we're leading up to this time where they could potentially both be in winter sports and that is all we are going to be doing <laughs> and it's going to be great and I can't wait. But yeah, that's, I just feel like that's all we're going to be doing is winter sports here. We went to like a parent meeting for wrestling and just hearing the commitment that wrestling is. This is the first time any of my kids have ever done it. I have no experience with the sport at all. Uh, but them talking about like practices five days a week and tournaments can be like all day on the weekends oh my gosh here we go like buckle up here we go <laughs> it's gonna get crazy that's really I feel like kind of it for stuff with the kids they they're just getting so involved in their sports which I think is amazing and it's been so so great so I was going to talk a bit about what I've been reading and what I've been watching because I feel like I haven't done that in forever. I'm just looking up right now um, to see the author of this series I just finished because I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, so I just finished the other night reading The Hawthorne Legacy book three and this is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I had read one and two and then had to wait for book three to come out. It is a young adult book and I'm scared to say too much and give like too much away, but it's a series and the first book starts out with this girl who gets just randomly finds out that she has inherited this billionaire's estate. She has no clue who he is, nothing. And it kind of throws her into this different life and throws her into dealing with his family. And he liked to play games and there's lots of riddles and mystery. And it's very, very good. So I definitely recommend that. Um, that was the last book that I finished. The book before that, I was reading The House Across the Lake. Is that by Riley? Sager, I believe. Um, that one was good up until the end and then it threw me for a loop and I did, I wasn't sure what I thought. <laughs> there was such a weird twist that you did, like out completely like so far out of left field that it wasn't even like, this is a good twist. It was kind of like, what is going on right now? <laughs> Which I guess makes it a great twist because it comes from so far out of left field. You didn't even expect it, but it threw me for a loop and I wasn't sure about it. I would recommend the book. It was a great mystery. Um, this woman's dealing with some tragic things in her life and has kind of went to her family's lake house to get away from the public eye while dealing with these things. And she kind of is thrust into this mystery of what's going on with this couple across the lake and is their marriage really what it seems? And yeah, I won't say too much more and give too much away, but it it was very good. I started last night reading 
I think it's called Last Train to Memphis. Let me double check. Yes. Uh, Last Train to Memphis, The Rise of Elvis Presley by Peter Gurlnick. And that is part one. There are two books by him um, about Elvis. The second one is Careless Love, Unmaking of Elvis Presley. So I started the first one last night. I am like pages into it, not very far at all. So I can't really give a review on it yet, but that is what I am currently reading is book one of that. And I also downloaded, I don't have it on here, it's on my Kindle, but I downloaded another Riley Sager book. I did like so much about The House Across the Lake that I'm going to give it another go with another one of their books. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> but the Elvis book I'm reading, I've always loved Elvis, but I admit I don't know much about his personal life, about his upbringing, about his, just him in general. I just like his music. And I watched with Eric the other night the Elvis movie that came out not that long ago. And overall, we were less than thrilled with the movie. It was kind of a bummer because I feel like it could have been so good because the actor did such a good portrayal of Elvis throughout his entire life. He was great. But there were just some like things in the movie that we were kind of, especially within, I would say, like the first half, um, probably almost the first half, that we were just... I don't know. I think I expected it to be more of a serious movie in a way about his life. I was thinking more along the lines of Walk the Line with Johnny Cash, um, which I loved that movie so much. I need to watch that again. Um, but yeah, Walk the Line about Johnny Cash that had Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon. I think I was ex expecting it to be more like that. And to me, there were just some like I don't even know. I almost want to say goofy parts in it that I was like, this is kind of odd. <laughs> Why are we throwing all these like little quirky little things, which I guess, I mean, I don't know. Anyways, that's just my opinion on it. The last, I, Eric said the last hour and I agree it was probably about the last hour of the movie were so good. So it did kind of wrap up in a, a better way um, of what we expected the movie to be. But Again, just personal opinion. Everybody has their own, but we were less than thrilled with the first half of the movie. Um, so that's why why I'm reading the Elvis book. That really intrigued me a bit about his life and, you know, to learn more about him. So we did some research on different books about him and that was one that had quite a good amount of good reviews. So I thought I would start with that book and see how I like that one. Um, what else have we been watching? I've just been catching up on some of my regular shows like Sister Wives, Grey's Anatomy, Teen Mom. I watch all of those. <laughs> so I've just been catching up on those. I watch them by myself. Eric doesn't enjoy them. Um, together we have been watching a lot of true crime documentaries. That's kind of our go-to if we have nothing else um, that we're really binging or something. We'll watch some of those. We are watching, oh my gosh, what's it called? A Friend of the Family on Peacock. It has Colin Hanks in it. Definitely kind of out there, crazy true crime story that there was a documentary about a while back called abducted in plain sight I believe I can never remember what the name of it was I think it was abducted in plain sight um so we watched that ages ago and then they just came out with a show based on it I can't remember I want to say her name's Anna I can't remember the woman who plays the mom in the show um she was Sookie in True Blood though I do remember that but I can't remember what her name is but anyways, we've been catching up with that. A new episode comes out every Thursday. We watched The Patient. That was good. That was on Hulu. I think that's kind of it. Like I said, just a lot of like random true crime documentaries and shows like that is what we have kind of fallen onto lately. <laughs> so if you have any good show recommendations, please let me know down below. What are you guys watching? What are you reading? 
yeah, give me some good recommendations. We definitely will sit down in the evenings. It's like, what are we going to watch tonight? <laughs> what are we going to watch? So we just end up scrolling through and finding a random show to watch. So I, we definitely need some good recommendations if you don't mind. But I think that's it. I've talked your legs off today. This is the longest episode I have done in so long. I hope that y'all don't mind. <laughs> but there was just a lot to catch y'all up on. The next one shouldn't be this long. So this was catch up. This is new beginnings catch up. <laughs> All right, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. I think we're good. And I will talk to y'all soon. Don't forget to comment down below for the giveaways. The keyword is countdown. And I will see you all again soon for another episode. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.